The next thing to look at is protein shape. So we've talked about how we put proteins together, what we can use proteins for, and how we use proteins in our diet to get those amino acids. Now we're going to look at the protein shape and how that affects its function. What you've got here, you've got peptide bonds. So what do I mean by that? Well, peptide bonds are just the bonds, the covalent bonds that hold the amino acids together. So we're going to look quickly at the different structures of a protein. And I've got my trusty pipe cleaner here to show you how this structure works. All right. So primary structure, primary structure is just the sequence of amino acids along that string, right? So you can see there, it's like, you know, letters spelling out a word. So you've got the individual amino acids along here. And primary structure would just be a big floppy string like this big floppy pipe cleaner. All amino acids, or I'm sorry, all proteins are going to have primary structure and they're going to have secondary structure, which is the next one. So the secondary structure is where the amino acids start to interact with each other and they start to fold and twist up. So, give me one second and voila. So you can see I've got my, I went from that big long pipe cleaner down to something a little smaller. Spin that one out a little bit. There we go. So we've got twists, right? Like you see on the screen there and some folds. Again, this is from those amino acids interacting with each other to start to squish down the protein. Then we're going to go into the tertiary structure. This is where now the protein is going to make its 3D structure. And all of the proteins are going to have this tertiary structure. So they all get primary, secondary, and tertiary structure. So they all get a 3D structure. So you can see mine, I got it folded up into that nice 3D package. This tertiary structure is again interactions between the amino acids, right? And this is going to determine how that protein, or as you can see in the pictures here, polypeptide, poly for many, so it's talking about the amino acids, um, this polypeptide chain, how it can do its job. Right? It needs to be folded up a very specific way in order to be used to be a building block to, say, make muscle tissue, or we're going to be looking at um, enzymes in another video. They need to be a very specific shape as well. So then the last structure is something that we find in some of the proteins. Not all proteins are going to have that last quaternary structure. Um, so quaternary structure is where you get two or more polypeptide chains bonded together. All right, so I've got another polypeptide chain. It's orange. And so these guys end up being bonded together so that they make one unit, right? Kind of, this one, I know it looks like they kind of got shoved together, but they would be attached at a couple of different points, so they make one big unit. And in this one in the picture, you can see it's actually three of the same protein, but it doesn't have to be the same. So for example, um, a protein that has a quaternary structure that uh, you might be familiar with, I mentioned it in an earlier video, is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is made up of four units, two of one type of protein and two of another type of protein. And so they are slotted together so that they can hold an iron atom. That way they can uh, carry the oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout your body. 
So next thing I want to talk about is how we can affect proteins. So egg whites, these guys contain a lot of proteins along with water and some other things like fats. But if you take egg whites and you beat them, now I am going to guess they did not do this by hand. They just did this with nice pictures. Uh, but if you take them and beat them with a mixer for long enough, it's going to change their texture. So this bowl is egg whites just like this bowl but we've gone from this liquid yellow mixture to this fluffy, stiff, white, you know, almost solid. So why does beating the egg whites change their texture, making them into this stiff material? And it's related to the same reason why eggs change when they cook. So, I'm assuming all of you have cooked an egg before, right? So if you take an egg, when you start, it's going to look like this plus the yolk, right? And once you start to heat it on the stove, it's going to start to change color, right? And the key there is the heat. Whenever you have a disruption of the environment that a protein is in, it's going to change the shape of the protein. So you've got your normal protein over here, and then over here you have what we call a denatured protein. So whenever you get changes in the temperature, pH, um, in the case of beating the egg whites, you're putting in a lot of energy, which actually increases the heat. So that's what's happening. You're adding energy and heat and it's denaturing the protein. So if we go back to my little pipe cleaner guy here, right, it's all nice and tight, but if we were to denature it, it would start to pull those bonds apart, not completely. So you'd still have some shape to it, but it's not gonna be the same shape it was. And so it's not going to be able to do the same job it did before. In fact, a protein like this probably wouldn't be able to do any job. And so here you can see those polypeptide chains, those protein chains that you can't see in the normal protein over here. So anytime that you get changes in temperature or pH, it's going to affect the ability of the protein to do its job. And this is one of the reasons why if you have a high temperature, like if you have a temperature over 103 degrees for more than a couple of hours, that's why they recommend that you go to the hospital because you're mostly made out of proteins and you'll start to do this to important proteins in your body. And this is also tied to why some people have curly hair and other people have straight hair because your hair is made out of proteins and the way that those proteins get put together when they're made at the roots determines whether it's going to curl or be straight. So the question is, how can you get curly hair if you have extremely straight hair like I do? If I allowed my hair to grow out, my hair would be incredibly straight like this. So how could you get curly hair if your hair was very, very straight? And yeah, you could get something like a perm, right? What a perm does is it wraps your hair around a structure to put the curl into it, but the chemicals in a perm are actually rearranging the bonds in the proteins of your hair so that that curl will stay. Once your hair starts to grow out, the curl disappears because the new hair doesn't have those bonds. Okay, so uh, the next section is going to be about enzymes, which is a special group of proteins.